Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are you good? Mwani bodonji. Amen. Give someone a high five before you sit down. Bakogo wakajambo kana kengalo ngatonna tula. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not going to preach. My role is very simple tonight. It's to declare that finally Africa 2018 is open. Africa Come on, give a shout to the Lord. Turn around and tell your neighbor it's open. The fountain is flowing now. You can begin to draw. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God who has brought us this far. And all that has been done. I believe that the organizing team is beginning to breathe a sigh of relief. After all the stress they've been through. But to just remember our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Tomorrow morning uh, we are going to be here very early in the morning for uh, the morning devotions. And after that, there will be worship and praise. And uh, Pastor Kate will be ministering to us. As uh, Pastor Tom mentioned already, he touched some of the juices that she's going to be unlocking for us. Let us try and make the time. And if you can't be here for some very good reason, I just want to let you know that the meetings going on here are being streamed live online. So in case you just can't make it here, you can still join us online. Amen. Amen. And uh, later in the afternoon, Pastor Tom will be ministering to us again. Amen. Amen. I believe those of you who were here as was ministering, you are seeing one thing after another being unlocked. Seeing the obvious become unobvious as they began to connect. Just make sure you are here tomorrow afternoon. Amen. Amen. Later in the evening, I'll be ministering. And uh, I just want to let, give you a few things to go think about. Our theme scripture says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Just a few questions for you to go ponder. What exactly was Jesus talking about? What kind of power? Very, very often, we consider that power to be the miracle working power. And so, if somebody is not working miracles and signs and wonders, they consider themselves not to have, to not have the power. And they refer to 
others as the powerful man of God. But I just want to remind you that the man Jesus was talking to had been with him for three years. In which three years he had sent them out preaching several times. And this is what he said to them as he sent them out. Preach that the kingdom of God is near. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. Raise the dead. Freely you are given, freely give. Isn't that miracle working? And those signs and wonders. This, that was not new to this man. Amen. If that is all they were to expect out of experience, then it was not new. So what exactly was Jesus referring to? That is part of what we want to unpack in the next few days. And then Jesus said, you will receive this power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And yet, just at the end of the Gospel of John, he appeared to the same man. In John chapter 20, 21, and he says to them, receive ye the Spirit. And he breathed upon them. So, is it that they had not yet got the Holy Spirit? Before the day of Pentecost, but after the resurrection, they received the Holy Spirit. Just as the Father creator breathed into Adam in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 and and Adam became a living being. So also Jesus, the everlasting word of God, the Lord Almighty, he breathed upon these men and they were regenerated. So then what did he mean when he says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you? Something to ponder. Just remember, Jesus said, when the Spirit comes, the world will not understand him because they don't see him. But you will know him because he is in you and with you. Did you cast that? He is going to be in you. But he's also going to be with you. There's a dimension there. The spirit in me. And the spirit upon me. I just want to tickle your your interest that you may raise your faith that the next few days will not leave you the same. Amen. And what does it mean to be a witness for Jesus? Was it, is it just preaching the gospel, Jesus loves you, Jesus died for you? Most of us consider witnessing to mean telling people about Jesus dying and resurrecting and giving us forgiveness. But the concept of a witness does not start in the New Testament. It starts way back in the Old Testament. There are several scriptures where God shows he's looking for witnesses. 
But in one of them, Isaiah chapter 43, God says, you are my people, ones that I created for my own glory. I will take care of you. When you pass through waters, I will be there to save you. When you pass through fire, I will, it will not scorch you. Because you are my witnesses. You are witnesses to the world that I am God. And besides me, there is no other. Let the nations bring their own witnesses. But you are my witness. Hey, hey, this is Old Testament. Hey, no, 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 there is a concept of being a witness for God. And to be a witness is to bring proof. If people are contending against something, you bring proof. You bring witness to prove the case. And the case that God wants to be proved is this, that I am God. Besides me, there is no other. I created. I save. And when I punish, nobody saves from my hand. You are my witness. That means there's someone contending with the fact that God is God. There is a force trying to assert that God is not God. And today that force is visible all around us. It's in many governments. It's in entertainment. It's in social life. It's in the media. It's all, all around us. It's in the voices of our friends. People who we live with in our homes. They want us to, to believe. It's good to be godly. But don't overdo it. We are here that we may receive power. And when we get that power, we shall be witnesses. Not only in word, but also in action. The Bible says, be still and know that I'm the Lord. A witness whom God can say, You think I'm not God? He's my proof. Do what you want. Like he did Job. You want to touch Job? Go and touch him. But don't touch his soul. A witness is material for such testings. And because he knows the father says, when you pass through water, I'll be with you. When you go through fire, fear not. You will not be scorched. Witnesses are men and women who have gone beyond self-love, self-preservation, self-seeking, and, and want one thing. Let the world know that he is God. And besides him, there is no any other God. Those three young men in the book of Daniel said, let it be known that our God is able to save us from the furnace of fire. But even if he chooses not, let it be known we will not bow down to the idol. God is looking for man, men and women who will stand in their places of work, who will stand in the government corridors, who will stand in the marketplace, who will stand amidst all kinds of immoral, perverse, 
temptations and they will say my God is able to save me from this my God is able to see me to the end but even if it doesn't work out as I think I trust him he who began a good work in me he is faithful he's going to finish it but let it be known I will not bow down to the idol I will not bow down to the temptation I will not bow down to the compromise because I am a witness tell your neighbor I am a witness come on tell somebody I am a witness brother sister this is the kind of field we want to plow. This is the field we want to turn around. And believe that by the time we come to the end of these seven days, you will not be the same person that came here. You will go back to be a witness. Not by power, nor by might. But by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want us to close the day by taking one each other's hand and praying for each other. Say, Lord, do not let us miss the timing. Don't let this, my neighbor, be distracted. Don't let anything hold him or her back. Let's just hold hands and stand up on to our feet. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, As we hold our hands, let us we are going to lift up our voices to pray. Remember, what you sow is what you reap. If you pray with all of your heart, you will reap with all of your heart. If you pray as a formality, you reap as a formality. Amen. Let us begin with thanksgiving to God. You thank him that he brought you here. You thank him that he has a plan for you. You thank him that he, when he starts something, he finishes it. Start through thanking and flow into in, in asking. Now lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your voice and let us talk to the living God. Lift Lift your voice and talk to the living God. Bring thanksgiving to him. Bring praises to him. Thank him for all the plans and purposes he has for you this week. All that he has stored for you. Blessed be your holy name, O God. Your word is a living God. And you have stored it up for us. You have brought us here on the holy mountain. That we may have an encounter with you. We do not seek man. We do not seek things. But we seek you, O my to know you to encounter you to deal with you to allow you to deal with us to allow you to change us break us remold us and redeploy us oh father in the name of Jesus we bring all our natures and characters to you we bring all our circumstances to you father we lay it all on the altar there is no God like you who is able to start to make a new beginning. There is no God like you who is able to save, who is able to change, who is able to renew. Therefore, we lay our lives on the altar. Father God, in the name of Jesus, exalt yourself through our lives. Manifest yourself through our lives. Let the world look at our lives and say surely God leaves a man to let the world look at us and say surely this is of God because that is what it means to bring a witness to the world to bring a testimony to the world Father your word says 
they overcame him by the blood of the lamb by the testimony of their lips and they did not love their lives unto death oh lord change us make us the men and women who will bring a testimony to the world who will bring a testimony to our nation who will cause the foundations to shake and the, the underworld to say the God of the heavens is here Father we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor when those men and women were preaching the gospel the, the nation said the men who turn cities upside down have come here make us men and women who turn cities upside down because of our testimony because of our witness in every place where you've planted us in our families in our marriages in our work in our ministry in our communities in the nations let us bring a witness to the glory of your name we give you praise Lord we give you glory let's just lift up our hands and give him praise and give him glory thank him, thank him and bless him Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Isn't it worth it to close here? Can I have an amen? It's good to go have a good night's sleep because tomorrow is going to be a long day. Amen? Amen. And uh, I just want to use this opportunity to appreciate uh, Captain Musinguzi. Uh, Captain Musinguzi. He was the one leading the entourage that brought in the flags. He is a busy man, but he's also a man who loves Jesus. A man who has given his life to the Lord. And he came, gave us this time that we may bring glory and honor to the Lord. Let's thank God for his life. Thank you, Jesus. And we pray that the Lord will meet you at your point of need. And will give you cause to smile. And glorify his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't we bid each other the grace of the living God? You can turn around and shake somebody's hand and say, that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And amen. Amen.